support the show, go over to our support store and get some awesome looking clothing. We got rock on hats, rock on shirts. The rock on hats are embroidered. Get your exclusive merchandise now. Rock on. Era begins again. What's up, everyone? How you doing? I got faith in voters again. Well, at least up in Sturges. Yes, we're going to hear voters overwhelmingly rejected the Jack Pine Gypsies uh, annexation by the city of Sturges, baby. Yes, it restores my hope. Little bit, little bit. Also, in the news, man, is it starting to kick these liberals back in the butt. You're going to hear one from uh, Seattle, where they went to the police chief's house. <laughs> Gets better all the time. Yeah, we got some Hells Angels news and uh, all kinds of good news, man, especially one story in particular that I'm really excited to bring to you guys and give my opinion. The USS Indianapolis. Uh, for those that are younger that don't know their history, uh, it was actually the ship that delivered the atomic bomb to where it needed to go to the Enola Gay. On the way back, it was torpedoed. All the men, there's a lot of lost lives, a lot of shark attacks. But Congress, all these years later, finally awarded the crew its highest honor. It just took them to 2020. Sad state of affairs that took them that long, but it is a story that I can't wait to uh, show you guys, and I think uh, it's long over freaking due, man. It really is. Uh, many people don't know, because some guys ask me what my hobbies are. Well, I like uh, doing ship models and stuff like that of uh, destroyers, freaking aircraft carriers. It just keeps my mind going when I'm on that 420. Makes me concentrate a little more. Uh, so I'm really into the Navy type of stuff, and that story was just fan freaking tastic uh, that it came out. So we're going to be talking about that again. And other hobbies, I don't know what other hobbies I got. You know, everybody knows I fish and all that stuff. But, you know, that's that. Uh, not for today. Uh, one thing people asked is, uh, do you got all white stuff in uh, the support store? No, man. All you have to do is click on one of the pictures. And uh, I think there's four or five different colors, for, uh, shirts you can look at, hats, that whole thing. Uh, so if you don't want to get any merchandise there, you can always support us uh, if you're on YouTube with Super Chat. Appreciate it. Send it back into uh, the show is what we do to keep it coming to you. But, uh, man, this country's really going, ain't it, man? It's getting freaky out there. Uh, everybody's heading up the Sturges. And, boy, you know, from uh, the last segment I covered uh, where the other 98% they call themselves on Facebook we're calling bikers, uh, drug traffickers, child traffickers. That one pissed me off real bad. Uh, and all kinds of mean names. <laughs> and that's how they look at you. And people, you know, shot back. We're all angry and stuff. And I'm sitting back here. Well, damn, man. That's the way they used to look at us when being a biker wasn't cool back in the old days, man. Before all this stuff happened in 94. Because I... Always say it happened in 94 because that's when the rub explosion happened where you couldn't get a damn bike and that's where Harley's prices started to start jacking was back in 94. But that's how people looked at us. And now you're starting to see that again. It's coming a little more mainstream where you got that one side. And I, you know what? The, uh, this country's broken down in the sides. It sucks, but it is, and that's the truth, and that's the reality. So, the same people that looked at us like that back then are the same people now, but they're more radical. <laughs> more radical. Uh, so, get used to it, man, and, and that's always going to keep on going and going and going because they don't like bikers. You know, they look at us as animals. They look at us as, you know, shit on the bottom of their shoes, and you should take that with a lot of pride, man. A lot of pride, because bikers never gave a hell 
what the hell society thought. Well, at least it used to be that way, but, you know, you still got a lot of cupcakes that are uh, buying motorcycles now and buying the leathers and acting like they're the big bad biker. <laughs> so, you know, it's funny. There's a bar around here, and it's one that is big time yuppie one, man. Big time. It's called the Broken Ore. If you guys are out in the Chicago area, you know it. They're the one, one of the first back in the early 2000s that uh, posted the No Club Colors uh, policy. And it, 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 you know, the layout of the place is cool. You know, you got the boat docks there. Uh, it's some good music, but I won't go there because y you you walk in and everybody just eyeballing you. It's kind of like when you walk into a Harley dealer if you're not, you know, they know you don't got money or something. And it's like they look down on you. And it's like you want to crack everybody in there, man. It's like, let's crack their asses. Show them what the hell, you know, being a biker is all about. Uh, but, you know... The Broken Ore, yeah, check that out. Do not freaking visit that place, man. Don't visit it at all. Uh, it's just a rub hangout, but the rubs are starting to get uh, the looks and all that stuff from these other people. Because like that post said, that post said, bikers for Trump. <laughs> it's like, dude, not everybody's into that crap, man. I don't like Chris Cox. I think he's a freak. You know, I'm not a part of that organization, so don't like lump me into that stuff. You know, but that's what they do. So uh, let's get on to some news for today, man. I think you're really going to enjoy that story about the USS Indianapolis. Uh, you know, I like putting different stuff in the show now. You know, yeah, I got the biker news, but we're putting a little more extra in there for you guys. Get the conversation going and, you know, not get hung up on uh, what this club's doing or that club's doing, man. That's all I'm saying. Oh, the Rapid City Journal. This is the one just just tickles my balls. Let me tell you, Sturges voters overwhelmingly reject, and that's again reject city's bid to annex Jack Pine Gypsies property. Hell yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Congrats, Jack Pines. Uh, Sturges voters overturned a Tuesday the city council's decision to annex. The Jack Pine Gypsies Motorcycle Club property. See, that's why you do not, do not piss off people that are in uh, clubs like this, because they know everybody. Way to go, man. Uh, this is what happens when bikers get involved in election stuff and take control. City Finance Officer Faye Bueno said 737 residents opposed annexation and 421 supported it for a total of 1,158 votes. Now, see, something a little worries me about that vote total. I think Sturgis has a, a population of 7,000, and there was only 1,158 votes? Come on. Get involved. That's the problem. They want to suppress that vote. The Jack Pine Gypsies, for those that do not know, and if you, you do not know who the Jack Pines are, something's wrong with you, started what is now known as the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally in 38, when it was the Black Hills Motor Classic. <laughs> I just love they shove it up their ass. Club, club Board Chairman Brent Winzel said Tuesday night the club appreciates the community support. Well, they better uh, appreciate uh, the Jack Pines because if it wasn't for them all the way back to 1938, you guys wouldn't have the town you do today. It was all 100% them. Well, they really did make us feel like we're part of the family, so to speak, he said. The biggest thing is we want to reach out and give them a big hug and thanks for all the support. And... Insane Throttle Motorcycle Madhouse thanks you guys too and Sturgis for voting this down. This is awesome. Uh, Winslow said the rally is like Christmas for club members, but they haven't been able to get into the spirit up until now, and they intend to find some way to show their appreciation to the community. See, that's what happens when clubs get involved in the community, man. The community 
most of the time will stand behind them and not the government officials. So there must have been a good outreach, a voter outreach on this one. Even though, again, you know, only 1,100 and something odd people voted, which you need to get up there a little bit, but the club did their thing. Way to go, man. Uh, last week, he told the journal that annexation would have allowed the city to impose new guidelines and ordinances that would make it difficult for the club that holds numerous rally and other motorcycle events to remain in existence. Huh. So that's the thanks that the motorcycle club would have got from the city for starting everything, bringing in millions upon millions of dollars in revenue. They wanted to stick it right up their ass is what they wanted to do. Not cool, man. Not cool. But that's what politicians do, don't they? By losing this place, you really lose what Sturgis has hung its hat on. It's bread and butter. You're damn right. At a June 1st meeting, the city council voted 7-1 to 1 for annexation, with Ray Crane voting nay, which... <laughs> See? <laughs> She's going to be the nice one. She's going to get reelected. I'd vote the other asses out. Uh, Ron Waterlin, a former member of the Jack Pine Gypsies, abstaining because he couldn't vote on it because he's a former member. Uh, Sturgis City Manager Danielle Ainsley said the city wanted to annex the property so the club would pay for services like water, sewer, road maintenance, and public safety. Well, wait a second here. Let's wait a second here. They're the ones who brought this rally to you guys. They're the ones who put Sturges on the map. But you're having a hard time with them not paying water, sewer, and road ma maintenance and public safety? Wait a second. Uh-uh. Uh -uh. That's ass nine. Completely ass nine. You're making the millions because of them people. You know, that's why I hate politicians, man. They're so damn hypocritical. And they're so naive and ignorant. All this club did for them, and that's what they wanted to annex them for. Bull. Winslow said the club turned in a petition with the more than 200 signatures to put the matter on the ballot. He said he felt good about the club's chances after going door-to-door -door and discussing the issue with local residents. That's how you do it. Door-to-door, -door, man. It's not about the internet. It's face-to-face -face time. Ainsley previously said that another annexation effort may be possible in the futures. Uh, yeah, they're just going to keep on going and going and going. They're going to lose. Then they're going to go back and say, well, this is why. It's just, you know what? You get sick of these people, man. Always trying to grab your money and send it somewhere else to pay for city services. No, I think they paid their portion over the years. You guys banked millions upon millions of dollars off of them idiots anyway you know this is a funny story here king5.com if you're in seattle tell me what you think here uh this is kind of a nationwide implication type of deal it, you know protesters say they were met with guns at seattle police chief carmen best home hmm <laughs> In a letter, Chief Carmen Best said the protesters who visited her neighborhood were aggressive, and if it weren't for the intervention of her neighbors, they would have trespassed and caused damage. Well, I spoke to some of the protesters there that night, and they say there's another side to the story. We literally wanted to go exercise our First Amendment right and ask the chief of police some questions. That's what members of the Seattle yeah, group right. Everyday March said Seattle. they wanted Schluck. to do Saturday evening when they went to Chief Carmen Best Snohomish neighborhood. Some of our protesters then exited cars to go see what's going on up there. And at which point they were met with neighbors who had rifles in their faces. Get out of here. This is a private drive. Get out of the road. It's private. They never got to the chief because they said neighbors intervened, blocking the road and showed them weapons. We tried to educate them and tell them it wasn't okay. They tried to explain uh, what they were doing there. Real life, honey. People on the road refused to move. They left when they no longer felt safe. We are from Seattle. We represent part of Seattle. So if you want to stick up for the people in that neighborhood, then go work for that, that county or whatever the case may be. Give up your position as chief of police of Seattle and go work there since you're sticking up for them. In a letter asking for city council to denounce the protesters' behavior, Chief Beth said these protesters were being aggressive and lauded her neighbors for deterring crime. Snohomish County Sheriff Adam Fortney agreed with Beth, calling the demonstrations at officials' homes a bullying tactic. You guys are coming out your house with AR-15s to confront a bunch of people in clothing, cotton, 
No protection, no nothing. Then don't sell on private property. I mean, if that's, I guess, whatever. Bullying, I would not say that. Holding you accountable is more likely. The group says they want understanding of what they're trying to accomplish, not to destroy, but to spark conversations. We are not trying to just talk out and yell. We are truly here to have a conversation because the things happening in Seattle right now cannot keep happening. They say they will continue to protest, it. continue to demonstrate until their demands are met. And speaking of those demands, Seattle City Council is in talks right now to see what defunding SBD would look like. And there's potentially a committee vote on that later on this week. In Seattle, Vanessa Mishanya, King 5 News. Freaking liberals. Uh, <laughs> that's the way you handle these punks. Come out with the AR-15s. They can. It's private property, man. I wouldn't come on private property, you damn protesters. Uh, you know, I, me, I'm totally against them. I'm totally against what they're about. And for those, no, I, you know, I don't support Leo. But you can't defund the cops. You're going to have chaos out there. It's always funny. You you know, i seen this one thing in uh, Colorado. Uh, they were freaking uh, holding signs, defund the cops and all that stuff. Next thing you know, there was some pushback, and they're running to the cops. You know, these people are hypocritical, and uh, you know what? It's a leftist, white, liberal movement. And you got a lot of blacks that actually left this BLM crap. And right now, the tide has turned where most people do not support BLM because they're a Marcus uh, organization. They're in bed with Antifa. So, yeah, this is what happens when you go to private property, man. You know, I know you came up near my property. You know, my uh, 38 snub nose is coming out as well as my freaking uh, AR. Yeah, I got an AR. Uh, that's coming out. And it's going to get downtime, man. There ain't no talking once that comes out. No, you passed your chance. That's all I'm saying. Now, this is the story I'm really excited about today. And, yeah, we got the Hells Angel stuff coming up and uh, the Wall of Shame. But... Navy Times, this is one of my favorite uh, publications. Uh, Congress awards its highest honor to the WW crew, World War II baby, of the USS Indianapolis. Did you hear that damn story where the kids now are saying they don't want to learn about World War II because it makes them feel uncomfortable? Yeah. That's the generation of kids we're raising a bunch of. Yeah. Uh, now, if you're over on the radio, come look at the Indianapolis boy, baby. She is gorgeous, man. Gorgeous. Look at them guns. I think those are 16s. I don't know. Uh, July 10th, 90, this is 1945. Uh, this was off the Mare Island uh, Navy Yard in Northern Cali after the final overhaul and repair of combat damage. Uh, this is by the Associated Press. Congress has awarded the Congressional Gold Medal, which it should have done way back then, its highest honor to surviving crew members of the USS Indianapolis, the ship that delivered key components of the first nuclear bomb and was later sunk by Japan during World War II. Uh, okay, so it was nuclear or key components. Uh, the ship with 1,195 personnel aboard delivered enriched uranium and other parts of the atomic bomb, little boy, that was later dropped on Hiroshima, Japan, in August 90, or 1945. Four days after delivering its top-secret cargo, the ship was sunk by Japanese uh, torpedoes on July 30th, uh, 45, of nearly 900 men who went into the Philippine Sea just 316 survived before being rescued nearly five days later. The death toll of the, uh, the Indianapolis uh, was 879, was the largest single disaster at sea in U.S. Navy history. Survivors were stranded in the open ocean with few light boats and almost no food or water. And during uh, severe uh, burns, dehydration, and shark attacks. Now, you know... One movie that I can't wait to see. I think it's great. It's called Greyhound by with Tom Hanks as the captain of the ship that's escorting the convoys over. Goes against a bunch of uh, torpedoes with uh, German subs. Uh, I'm a real history buff, so that's the air I really remember loving all the time, man. Since I was a kid, uh, because they were just awesome people back then. That generation was men. 
You want to talk men, those were men. You know, they saved this world from tyranny, and yeah, I can go on and on. Uh, in an instant, her crew went from fighting the battles without to f uh, without to fighting the battles within. Uh, that, of course, was from Mitch McConnell, one of the hosts of the Congressional and Navy leaders who spoke at Thursday's virtual ceremony honoring the eight surviving crew members of the 75th anniversary. Man, only eight left, and I don't think there's any left from Pearl Harbor. I might be wrong, maybe one. I don't, th I don't know. I might be wrong on that. The gold medal was awarded to the ship's entire crew, living and dead, and will be displayed at the Indiana War Memorial Museum in Indianapolis. After the sinking, the crew fought to stay alert, to look after each other, literally to hold on for dear life. Uh, you know, that uh, one movie, uh, it's called, what, USS Indianapolis, uh, with what's his freaking name in there. It was a decent movie, decent. Uh, he and other uh, speakers were shown on video because of that, blah, blah, blah. Those who perished in the water gave our nation the ultimate sacrifice, but the true legacy of the Indianapolis was cured before those torpedoes struck. Her uh, crew turned the tide of the war, so to her crew members who are still standing watch, your Congress and your nation say thank you. It's about damn time, too, man. Uh, retired Navy Captain William Toddy, who led a nuclear submarine named in honor of the Indianapolis, said the gold medal honors the crew accomplishments, not the fact that the ship was sank. The medal, quote, recognizes a fighting ship's crew, one that helped end the most terrible war this world has ever known. He called the crew members among the best the Na United States Navy has to offer. Damn right, man. Them boys in the Navy are the best of the best. Now, I get it. The inner uh, military fighting Marines, Navy, blah, blah, blah. But uh, you talk, you know, talk crap to somebody who's been a submariner, man. Been up in that uh, tin can underneath them waves. Yeah, talk crap to them. Uh, Navy Secretary Kenneth uh, Braywith addressed the surviving crew members directly, saying, All Americans owe you a forever debt of gratitude. You're damn right we do. He called the sinking one of the darkest chapters in our naval history. We can never forget the astounding grit and bravery shown by those who lived to tell the tale or the important lesson our Navy learned from that tragedy. The crew members uh, of the Navy, uh, th they were awesome. Your service, your sacrifice embodied the core tenets of our Navy, honor, courage, and commitment. It is about time that the Indianapolis got their honor. Really love that story. Let me know what you guys think. Let's go to the wall of shame. WJLA. PGPD cop suspended after he's accused of attempted sexual assault of a woman in her home. My God, here we go Allison, again. Allison, an officer with the Prince George's County Police Department, has been accused of attempted rape while off duty. Corporal One Brian of the three. was arrested last night, charged with attempted rape, as well as assault and false imprisonment. Police say that the victim told police the incident occurred at her home on July 30th. The newcomer is being held without bond and is suspended from the police force without pay. Hey, yes, Brian Newcomer, tank. you are in the wall of shame, you freak. Second degree rape, three counts of second degree assault and false imprisonment. Freak. All right, one more for uh, Corey Graff's wall of shame here. And you know what, Corey Graff, from what I'm hearing, man, he's going to be getting the show on uh, Motorcycle Madhouse Radio coming uh August 1st, it's going to be some great stuff from Corey, man. I heard he's even doing a sports program, mixing a little hunting stuff. It's not going to be just a biker stuff, man. Yeah, my show is going to be biker related, but we're going to have others on there. It's going to be a real entertaining station, man. You know, mix in some hard rock, rock, and all that good stuff. Good stuff, man. And all you have to do is download an app to your phone that's free. And you will listen to us or you can listen to us on the web. It's not going to be uh, censored, any of that crap. So it's going to be good stuff. Uh, let's see here. 13 WMAZ Dublin uh, uh, police officer tased, arrested at Crazy Bull in Macon. Uh, he was tased because of resistant arrest. Let's listen in here. An off-duty Dublin police officer was arrested early this morning at the Crazy Bull in Macon. 
Witnesses say that a 31 year old man laid his cell phone down in the club and that 24 year old Gary Jones picked it up and walked off with it. Jones was detained by the bar security. That's according to a release from the Bibb County Sheriff's Office. He was arrested after denying that he took the phone. While being arrested, he struggled with police officers multiple times, requiring Jones to be tased. According to Dublin Police Chief Tim Chapman, Jones is suspended at this time. Chapman said that this is, quote, out of character, end quote, for Jones, but that doesn't dismiss his actions. Jones was taken to the Bibb County Jail and charged with felony theft and obstruction of peace. He's being held on a $5,300 bond at this time. How does it feel to get tased? Ooh, that hurts, don't it? <laughs> it's nice that you, you get to feel it. You know, you guys are on the other side. Uh, but you are now in the wall of shame as well. Way to go, Corey. Good stuff. And our final story from Kim Bolin. Yes, Kim Bolin. She covers a lot going up north. Uh, Alberta Hells Angel extorted and attacked former BC business partner. And uh, look at all that 420. Oh, she makes my mouth water. Oh. Anyway, it's a good grow operation, man. They got everything set up pretty damn good. I don't know, man. I like hydro better, you know, grown hydro, you know, instead of, you know, soil based. I don't know. Angel and two associates convicted of several offenses in BC Supreme Court. More for more than a dozen years, Hope resident Richard Hold grew cannabis illegally for Edmonton Hells Angel Neil Cottrell. Well, now it's not illegal, but you know what is it? I think we can have five plants here in Illinois. Who, who knows? Uh, when uh, Hull told Cottrell at a meeting in December 2014 that he wanted to get out of the business, he didn't think that there would be any problem. But a year and a half later, on August 1st, 2016, he was grabbed by Cottrell, uh, Cantrell's uh, son Stefan, and fellow Hells Angel Robert Lowry. He was brutally beaten and told he would have to sign his house over to his former business partner. What happened when you get in that street game, man? All three men were convicted last month in B.C. Supreme Court of aggravated assault, kidnapping, extortion, forcible confinement, and overcoming uh, resistance. What the hell does that mean? Does it mean uh, resistant arrest? Uh, their sentencing is scheduled for December. Justice Ward Brandt said Hull, despite his admitted involvement in the drug trade, was a credible witness at trial, and the judge noted that much of what he uh, said was bolstered by other evidence. His blood was found on Lowry's jeans and inside an SUV where he said the attack took place. You're supposed to get rid of all that stuff, man. You know, when everything's done, get rid of it, burn it, get away. Uh, and police testified about finding more blood on a roadside stump near where Hull agreed to meet uh, uh, Cantrell that day. Cantrell has a lengthy associations with the Hells Angels. He was once a member of the Alberta Nomads chapter, but more recently has joined the Edmonton-based West Ridge chapter of the Hells Angels. Lowry is with the Nomads. The link to the notorious biker gang is not mentioned in Branch's 34-page uh, written judgment. You know, how bad is prison up in Canada? You know, I actually seen one, uh, you know, that world's most dangerous prisons crap. Uh, in Germany, man, you get to cook your own food, and this is a max one, man. You get to do this, you get to do that. Man, I wish they had them here. Uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, who testified that he first agreed to run and grow operations for Neil Cottrell in 2001 or 2002. Uh, he would arrange for product to be delivered to Edmonton where uh, Cantrell resided and Cantrell would take over distribution from that point. Uh, the product from several different grow op properties controlled by Howell and his partners were distributed in this manner. He said he made between sixty dollars and uh, $100,000 annually. But didn't file tax returns. That's all you made? Yeah, well, anyway. And he said he owned one of his grow properties on Johnson Road in Hope through a nominee. Uh, over the years, there were no major difficulties in the business relationship with Cantrell, he said. Though how suffered certain police seizures or third-party thefts at his properties. He traveled to Edmonton to meet Cantrell on December 28th to tell him their business relationship would be coming to an end. He also told Cantrell he would uh, could uh, have the growing equipment if he wanted it. 
Uh, Hal does not recall uh, Cantrell raising any concerns about their change. 19 months later, he found a note on his Johnson Road fence. This is Neil. I really need some information on something we talked about. Call me, please. My son and I are in town for a bit. So basically set him up. Uh, he was uh, put in the back of an SUV where he was struck repeatedly, bleeding profusely. The assailants accused him of orchestrating one of the grow rips himself and say they heard he had a multi-million dollar uh, or m he had million dollars buried somewhere. He said he had 5000 he could give them. They told uh, how that he was going to have to sign Johnson wrote over to them. Says he agreed to do what they asked because he was in fear of his life. They all headed to his property. Police later showed up arresting the Alberta trio and taking Hal to the hospital. He was interviewed the following day and asked to be placed in the witness protection program. My God, there's the streets. Don't get into the freaking 420 business up in Canada, man. You can never really trust anybody these days. This is Carrie here from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to BaggerSyndicateCycles.com and check it out. Mwah. Okay! Yeah, man, I love her. <laughs> uh, you know what? Jack Pine Gypsies, man, congratulations on your big win. And I was just sitting here thinking about it, you know, during this uh, commercial break. Why the hell hasn't bikers started their own political party? I'm talking, you know, maybe the American Biker Party or something like that. Run uh, candidates on a local level and really do something. I believe it would be really successful. Hey, Popeye! Oh, gee! Let's get this going, man. I know we can do something. You guys showed us in uh, Texas against Abel Reyna. I think we can make a really big dent in some good issues, man. And I think uh, hardworking people would trust bikers a hell of a lot more than these suits. I think it's, a, you know what, the examples are there of what bikers can do when we get involved in this process. Again, Texas, they beat Abel Reyna by 20 points and he was a freaking incumbent. An incumbent. Because people get sick and tired of people not being real with them. And I think bikers, they're the most realest people around, man. They'll tell you straight up what is and what isn't. So I really think a biker party would be the perfect thing. And I'm not talking something like bikers for Trump. I'm talking about an actual political party. Something that we can all be proud about and something that can make some real change happen. And I'm not just talking, you know, doing our A-bait stuff and, you know, the biker's rights, which could be part of the platform. But, you know, real issue platforms, man. You know, this country has went through Democrat and Republican for years upon years. Well, let's just say decades upon decades. This country's only had one or two major political parties going on. Yeah, we got Libertarians and you got the Green Tree Hugger Party. But I'm talking bikers, man. Because after seeing these outcomes, I think we can do some damage, man. What do you guys think? You know, let's get a hold of Popeye. Tell him, start speaking on this subject. You know, maybe talk to Double D over at MotorcycleProfilingProject.com. You know, he's been handling all that legislative stuff uh, with Motorcycle Cop or Motorcycle Club Profiling. Real good ideal, I think, man. Real like, good ideal. Get some discussion going. Talk about it at NCOM. I think we can kick some butt, man. I really do. Because... Bikers, when they get organized, they don't play around, man. They get what they need, and I think this would be the pop perfect opportunity to do something like that. But Jack Pine Gypsies, man, going door to door, that is the way to do it. Getting in there, talking to the people. That's why I say local level or, you know, yeah, you run candidates at the local level, maybe a couple state and uh, federal levels, and give them hell. It, give them hell. Get involved in the process. You know, Jack Pine Gypsies, man. You showed us how to do it, man, and you won your thing. Uh, you know, I can't believe that Sturgis wanted to charge him for water, sewage. No, you should be throwing that crap in. And, you know, I'm not trying to be a jerk about it, but these guys since 1938 put Sturgis on the map. 
it's time to give a little freaking, uh, you know, payback and thanks instead of trying to stick it up their ass. That's just, uh, you know, that's the way I feel on this subject. That's all. Uh, what do you guys think about uh, that Seattle police chief, man? It's a little different story when it starts hitting close to home, isn't it, man? You know, I think they were well within their rights to pull out them ARs. It was private property. That's what happens. You know, you show force and you meet, you know, you meet it with force is what you, you know, what I'm getting at. You know, these little idiots want to go around and cry and whine and educate. What you educating about, man? You know, buyers know more than anybody about profiling. So I don't want to hear you little uh, gums rap, man. Uh, you know, you're not telling us anything we don't know about. You know, you want to do it the right way? Do it the right way. You know, you want to protest your little girly shorts off? Go ahead. Maybe you want to pull up your pants while you're at it. I'm just saying... You know, just saying, I'm not saying anything bad, just saying, you know, pull up the pants, put a belt buckle on. People might take you a little bit more seriously. But, you know, they learned what happens, man. And that's what regular Americans need to do. I was watching that Colorado video, man. They walked them straight out of town. Even the freaking cops did on the horses. They walked their asses right out of town, man. It's like, yeah, you ain't doing it here. You might be able to do that in that liberal city crap, but you ain't got it going on here. Uh, the other stories, uh, especially uh, Corey Graff's Wall of Shame. And when I say the three things, man, we're talking about it's either beating on a woman, it's either sexual assault, or it's kid stuff. It's always fallen within them parameters with these cops. Now, it was cool that, you know, the cop experienced tasing, you know, because they tased the hell out of everybody else, so, you know. What's fair game is fair game. <laughs> Tase that ass, I say. Tase it. Uh, the Hell's Angel story, well, you know, that's what happens when you get into the business, man. You, you know, you're either going to be on it or you're not going to be on it. Man, they got a good grow operation, though, man. It was all those beautiful Mary Janes sitting around. Oh, my God, that's like heaven for me. Uh, Max behind me, too, with his, uh, you know, marijuana leaf. Hey, do you guys want me to put Max on a shirt, you know, with his marijuana leaf? Let me know if you're interested in that, by the way. Uh, but that's just a street game, man. And then he asked for witness protection. He should have took it like a man if he didn't like what was happening. Shoot. You know, don't call the cops. If you're getting beat on, pull out a gun, shoot the guy. That's all I have to say on that one. That's the street game, man. It's the way things work. Uh, and finally, the Indianapolis thing. I think that had to be my favorite article out of this whole show. Like I said, that generation, all I could say was men. The real. Even the women were real. Not like today. Not fakes. You know, I always like that one meme uh, that shows uh, how the fellas were storming uh, the beaches in Normandy at 18 years old and now you got these 18 year olds crying and whining like a bunch of sissies you know could you imagine if we went to war today like it was in world war ii with these people man we would have got slaughtered by the germans we got slaughtered by the japanese you know because they'd have been out there with their pc stuff uh we don't want to do this we don't think it's right we don't Please don't hurt me. That's what we would have been facing, man. And especially after that one story I seen. Oh, my God. They don't want to learn about World War II because it hurts them. It offends them. It makes them not feel comfortable. That's pretty outrageous, man. And you know what? Teachers are probably uh, bending to that stuff. No, you should learn about World War II. You should see what happens. World War II was 30 years before I was born. 30 years, that's all it was. I would be speaking German or Japanese right now if we didn't have our greatest generation out there. So would you people. If we didn't have them, we'd be all screwed. We didn't have our men on Normandy or Omaha or the Bulge or freaking uh, Iwo Jima. All our people in the Navy, our Marines, our Army, our Air Force, up in the B-17 uh, bombers, man. 
it's about time they got their recognition and it's a shame that it took so damn long and hopefully all the others from world war ii because quite frankly a lot of them are dying at a very fast rate and give it about 10 15 years you won't have any more of our greatest generation around those are the people that really defined the united states of america and they're owed a huge huge debt of gratitude man so uh, as always man i appreciate you uh, tuning in and thanks for all the donations we've been receiving yeah youtube been uh, hitting us pretty damn hard as well as some other platforms but hey it happens uh instagram i got stuff over there that is not seen anywhere else so make sure you go uh, hit that if you're not uh subscribed to it yet check it out man i think you like it you know quick little minute videos of what's going on behind the scenes and all that good stuff but until then you guys take care be careful go eat you some you know what you want me to eat <laughs> pound save the pink taco man pound rock on hit it there and i'll talk to you guys I later said goodbye vamos adios vamos, everybody. so long get your hat don't forget to go over to harleyliberty.com get all your motorcycle club news what's happening in the scene we have a new article or articles every single day over at HarleyLiberty.com. And don't forget the sister site, BikerLifestyleMagazine.com. If you're into all that kind of manufacturer motorcycle and news, motorcycle rallies and bikers help in the community, motorcycle club editorials and more. And don't forget to visit us on Facebook. Get involved in the conversation. Watch videos done a motorcycle madhouse and more. Also, we have Instagram. Yes, Instagram. We have material that is not seen anywhere else. So don't forget, get on our platforms, check out your daily biker news. Rock on! Hey guys, this is Kara from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. I just want to let you know about a place where you can get the greatest apparel top of the notch all about baggers bikers and brotherhood and ladies don't you worry we didn't forget about you check it out at beggars syndicate cycles.com show, show is now available on spotify and all major platforms including ir radio itunes stitcher and more don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the crowd today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock on!